Hi! Do you like reading? Me too! My name's Rachel and this is my reading room. Come on in! Today, we have another Christmas story. It's a really good one. It's called The Day Santa Stopped Believing in Harold. And it's written by Maureen Fergus. And the pictures are by Cal Atkinson. Well, come on, let's go read. The Day Santa Stopped Believing in Harold. Words by Maureen Fergus. And art by Cal Atkinson. One stormy night, very close to Christmas, Santa and Mrs. Claus were sitting in the cozy little log cabin at the North Pole. Mrs. Claus was busy mending the seam of Santa's fourth best pair of red velvet pants. Santa was supposed to be going over the roster for this year's sleigh team. Instead, he was moping. Several times, Mrs. Claus asked Santa what was wrong. Each time he muttered, nothing, then sighed loudly. <sighs> Finally, Mrs. Claus said, Papa, I can't help if you won't tell me what the problem is. All right, said Santa with another sigh. Well, you know, Harold, Mrs. Claus smiled. Brown hair, freckles, lost a tooth last week, sometimes forget to. Stop, interrupted Santa in a choked voice. Don't say another word. You don't need to keep pretending on my account because I don't believe in Harold anymore. Mrs. Claus stared at Santa as though he'd suddenly sprouted antlers. Look, Harold has always been a big part of my Christmas and I still like the idea of Harold, explained Santa. But lately I've come to realize that there are a lot of things about Harold that just don't make sense. Like what? asked Mrs. Claus. For one thing, I'm pretty sure his mom writes his Santa letter said Santa. So what if she does, said Mrs. Claus. That doesn't mean anything. Maybe not, said Santa. But what about the snack, huh? What about that? What about it, asked Mrs. Claus. I think Harold's dad lays out my snack on Christmas Eve, whimpered Santa dramatically. Think about it. Harold is way too small to lift a big carton of milk. He can barely hold his own head up. Papa, Harold isn't a baby anymore. Yes, well, that's another thing, isn't it, said Santa. That Harold who sat on my knee at the mall last year didn't even look like the real Harold. Harold is a real person, Papa, said Mrs. Claus. Real people look different from year to year. Santa wasn't listening. You know what's going on here, don't you, he asked. Harold's parents are trying to trick me into believing in him. And just why would they do that, asked Mrs. Claus. They think that if I know the truth about Harold, Christmas will be ruined for me, cried Santa. Either that, or they want the Harold gifts all for themselves. Mrs. Claus shook her head and sighed. You know what you're doing, don't you? You are looking for reasons not to believe in Harold, instead of just accepting him as one of the best, most magical parts of Christmas. Santa looked uncomfortable, and maybe even a little uncertain. But all he said was, I know what I know. The terrible news traveled like a spooked Arctic hare. Santa had stopped believing in children. Not all children, Santa assured Murpin, the elf supervisor in the computer gizmo department. Just Harold. Uh-huh, said Murpin. And you know what else, said Santa? I'm not the only one who doesn't believe in him. My friends don't believe in him either. Uh-huh, said Murpin. Jack Frost says his mom and dad told him that Harold doesn't exist. And the abominable snow monster says only a baby would believe in Harold. Uh-huh, said Murpin. Do I look like a baby to you? Boomed Santa. Murpin stared at Santa's twinkling eyes, rosy cheeks, and jingling jelly belly. Forget I asked, sniffed Santa. I'm going to talk to the reindeer. The reindeer listened carefully to Santa's evidence against the existence of Harold. Then they whispered among themselves for a few minutes. Finally, Donner said, on the one hand, we're not convinced that Harold is real. I knew it, said Santa unhappily. On the other hand, continued Donner, we're not convinced that Harold isn't real. So what are you saying? asked Santa. 
We're saying we need proof, said Donner, and we think we know just how you can get it. Now, strange as it seems, while Santa was up north telling Mrs. Claus and the elves and the reindeer that he didn't think Harold was real, Harold was down south telling his parents and his friends and his turtle that he didn't think Santa was real. Deep in his heart, Harold wanted to believe in Santa, but the older Harold got, the harder it was for him just to have faith. What I need is proof, thought Harold, and I think I know just how I can get it. That Christmas Eve, Harold hung his stocking, helped set out the Santa snack, and hugged his parents goodnight, just like he did every Christmas Eve. On this particular night, however, after his mom and dad had gone to bed, Harold tiptoed back into the front room and hid behind the armchair across from the fireplace. If Santa is real, thought Harold drowsily, I will definitely be able to see him coming. Many hours later, Santa and the reindeer touched down on the roof of Harold's house, which Santa had saved for last. Santa's plan was to hide in Harold's front room and see if Harold ran out of his bedroom on Christmas morning. If he did, Santa would know that Harold is real. If he didn't, Harold's parents would have some explaining to do. After settling into his hiding spot, Santa tried to stay awake, but it was extremely warm and cozy in Harold's front room. And Santa was very tired after his hard night's work. Slowly, he closed his sleepy eyes. The next thing Santa knew, it was Christmas morning. Too bad we don't know any little boys who'd like to open some presents from Santa, said Harold's mom, who'd spotted Harold hiding behind the armchair. Aha, thought Santa. Too bad there are no presents from Santa, whispered Harold's father. Oops, thought Santa, who'd forgotten to set out the gifts before hiding. I don't care about presents, said Harold as he slowly stood up. I just wanted to see Santa, and I didn't. At the sound of Harold's voice, Santa gave... Santa's heart gave a wild leap. Harold's mother screamed, ah! Harold's father sprayed coffee everywhere. Harold's face lit up like a Christmas tree. You're real, he shouted, running over to give Santa a hug. After Harold and Santa got over the shock of finding out that each of them had thought the other wasn't real, they sat on the floor reading comics, playing with toys and licking candy canes until the sound of tiny hooves impatiently Stomping on the roof reminded Santa that it was time to go home. Goodbye, Harold. Goodbye, Harold's parents, cried Santa as he prepared to magic himself up the chimney. Goodbye, Santa, cried Harold. See you next Christmas morning. Unless you'd rather fall asleep behind someone else's sofa, cried Harold's parents. Santa's big booming laugh rang out at once, shaking the walls and knocking several glass ornaments off the tree. And then, in the wink of an eye, he was gone. The end. I love this story. It is so silly. It's funny to think about how Santa sometimes has feelings of his own, just like we do. Well, I hope you enjoy this story. And if you'd like to read more with me, don't forget to like and subscribe to read along with Rachel. And remember, if you have a book, you have a friend. And I'm your friend, too. Bye!